And we are in week two of the 2026 season here in the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty. Week one went relatively well. First half was a little sloppy, but, you know, we got things corrected, got things figured out. This week, we will be traveling down to Georgia, which is a pretty long trip if you're moving, if you're uh, going from Boulder, Colorado, take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech has not played yet, so we do have a bit of an advantage there because we sort of have a better idea of what we have, what we want to try to accomplish with what we have. Georgia Tech still trying to figure things out, so maybe that will help us. We'll look at that in just a moment, but first of all, let's talk about our top stories. Off on the wrong foot, Arkansas's high hopes are dismantled on opening weekend. It was Georgia beating Arkansas 56-17, to the Hogs who the last few years let's be, let's be honest they've been they've been uh, they've been looking promising they've been building that program and so to start off week 1 with such a devastating loss like this that's going to be tough for them to recover from so a big win for Georgia though as Georgia struggled last year they're trying to get their name back up into the uh, into the elite programs of, around the nation uh, and then conference collision Alabama Kentucky prepare for war Alabama Lost last week. I don't remember who they lost. Let's see if they have a schedule here. Oh, yeah, they lost to Texas, 28-7. to The Longhorns, who are now number one. So this is Alabama trying to get things back on the right track. Meanwhile, Kentucky, they're still knocking on the door of the top programs in the country. They are 1-0. They beat Mississippi last week, 31-21. That's a big win for the Kentucky program there, especially the way Ole Miss has been playing. This week, number eight, Florida is highly focused on SEC opener and number one, Texas. The Longhorns, of course, with the big win against Alabama, their introduction to the SEC. Uh, last week, Florida, uh, they beat Syracuse, dominated that game 45-7. to This week, a uh, chance for them to um, kind of regain their spot in the top five, uh, playing against Texas. So that'll be a big game for the Gators. Uh, Saturday showdown, it doesn't uh, get much bigger than Texas A&M's conference opener against Georgia. So we already talked about Georgia. Texas A&M, though, they're 1-0. Who did they beat last week? No, they're 0-0. <laughs> They've not played yet. So they'll play Georgia in their season opener down in Athens. We'll see if the Aggies can uh, continue their uh, move. Bittersweet beginning. Tennessee loses Berg to a knee cartilage, but wins season opener. The Vols beat Texas A&M, but I guess they lose one of their top players. Sorry, I said Texas A&M. Texas State. Uh, but they lose one of their top players. The way to play, Vanderbilt takes care of Mississippi State in conference opener. Big win there for the Commodores. They win 23-10 against Mike Leach and his offense. Kind of interesting, curious about that, by the way. Uh, looks like they did not have such a big day passing. Uh, oh, wow. Why were they running the ball? Well, they didn't run the ball very much, actually. Um... Yeah, all right, so a big win there for Vanderbilt. They start the season off 1-0 in the conference. Holding their ground, the home field, Hex is alive as, and well as Volunteers win close one. Uh, 28-27, they had to outscore the uh, Bobcats 14 to nothing in the final quarter to get that win. Uh, season on route, the Gators torch Syracuse defense to a tune of 45 points on opening day. So that is a look at the top stories. Top 25 polls, we won't, we'll kind of blitz through this. Texas, Oklahoma, Michigan, Texas A&M, Clemson, Auburn, Notre Dame, Florida, South Carolina, and USC. Those are your top 10 teams. Uh, Oregon, Penn State, Washington, Ohio State, Colorado. That's us, of course, after our big win over Colorado State. Miami, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, and Minnesota. That's your 11 through 20. And your bottom five here in the top 25, Georgia, who was unranked last week with that big win over Arkansas, shoves them up to number 21. Kentucky 22 after beating Ole Miss, Nebraska 23, Cal 24, Syracuse number 25 after their fall to Florida. That's your top 25. Uh, we'll real quick look at the Heisman watch before digging into our game this week. So Horner still leads the uh, race there. Uh, Jason Williams, Mark White, Rob Lee, and Ray Powers rounds out the top five. No change. Obviously week one, not a lot of games being played. Uh, so that is a look at the Heisman watch. So let's talk now about Georgia Tech. Obviously, no statistical information to work off of, but when you look at the ratings, you do see that Georgia Tech on paper is better overall, better offense than Colorado. Our defense, though, actually B plus. We do have a on paper better defense than Georgia Tech. Hopefully, that will uh, 
that will bear out in the game today. So that's a look at Georgia Tech's ratings. Let's go look at their roster. Before we look at their roster, let's look at the head coach of Georgia Tech. This is Jamie Chadwell, who was, of course, Casey Clawson's first boss in this dynasty. He is now the head man for the Yellow Jackets down there in Atlanta. Let's look at his offensive style, of course, spread option. He does uh, run a little more than he passes. Uh, not overly aggressive. <laughs> not aggressive at all, actually, if you look at a 15%. A sub normal, no huddle is normal. Looking at the defensive style, they do run a multiple D playbook. Uh, they will try and stop the pass a little more than the run, but they are very aggressive with an 80% aggressive rating. Uh, and then they won't sub a lot. So that's a look at Jamie Chadwell, multiple D. So obviously, when we look at their uh, defense, that's um, kind of what we'll. Uh, we'll, so we, with the understanding that they're going to run a three-man front, four-man front, they're going to uh, they're going to mix it up on defense. So now let's go look at the actual personnel that Jamie Chadwell has to work with. So you look at James Bradshaw. He's their starting quarterback, and he's the kind of guy that Jamie Chadwell is going to want. He's got decent speed, decent acceleration. He's going to be kind of your more uh, dual threat quarterback. He's going to be able to pass. He's going to be able to throw. It's an 85 overall, so he's not anybody that's going to just absolutely terrify us. But he'll definitely be able to make some plays. Running backs, they're a little thin at running back. 79, 77. And then their third team running back is actually a fullback. And their fourth team running back is a tight end. So, uh, you know, not a lot to terrify us. They got decent speed at the running back position with a 90 and then an 88. Uh, acceleration, it's okay. Look at their fullback, 74, 72. You know, that's okay. Not great. But an NCAA, uh, 70. If you have a fullback in the 70s, He's going to be able to get the job done. Looking at the receivers, they actually have a pretty deep receiving core. When you They start with a 90, so, you know, that's obviously, he's not going to win the Boletnikoff, but uh, that's pretty good. Uh, they do have a third, their uh, slot guy, Brunner. He's a 93 speed, but he, his acceleration is only an 81, so it will take him a while to get to his top speed. But uh, these are some guys that will be able to make some plays. We just got to make sure that we, you know, do what we do. Tight end, uh, 84 uh, overall for their starting tight end, George Dukes. Uh, so he could be an issue. Um, he's going to be, you know, obviously be able to block for the run. But he's got 84 speed. So he'll, uh, he'll be a threat in the receiving game. Left tackle, 78. Left guard, 86. Levine, an 86. Center is a 79, right guard 78, and the right tackle is an 86. So they got a right tackle and then a left guard who could be an issue. Uh, but obviously this is not one of the better offensive lines that we're going to face this year. Left end, uh, Larson, 86, right end, and 85. Defensive tackle, 79, 77. So they're a lot better on the edge than they are up the middle. Uh, that might be something for us to keep in mind as we run our offense. For our running game, that actually really works out for us as we often uh, will just kind of run up the middle uh, on our in our running game. Most of our runs are inside zones. We're heading into the A gap. So I, that's that kind of works out for us. Linebackers, you've got an 89 left outside linebacker, Jay Austin. That's a very good player. Middle linebacker is an 82. Right outside linebacker is an 82. So their left outside linebacker, he's going to be their threat at the second level. Um, then looking at their corners, uh, 86-72. So there's a big drop-off from their starting corner to their second string. So that bodes well for us in the passing game. Free safety is an 81. Strong safety is an 83. So their, their secondary is okay, not great. Actually, that's... Uh, I feel pretty good about going against their secondary. Kickers are 76, their punters are 74, so their kicking game is okay, but uh, I, I would actually not call that an FBS level, I say FBS, uh, Power 5 level uh, special team situation. So that's Georgia Tech's uh, roster. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game and see if we can start the season 2-0. So here we are looking at the team ratings. Georgia Tech does have a slight advantage in the overall ratings. However, our overall ratings are better on defense. I feel like that is going to be where the real uh, importance is held, I guess. Uh, their top players, Daniels, their wide receiver is 90 overall. He's somebody that we're going to have to watch on DJ Austin, their left outside linebacker, obviously very good. And then their left guard, Levine, is an 86. That's their top players. We're bringing in Palmer, our running back, Hodges, the cornerback, and then Alston. Uh, although Palmer and Alston won't get a whole lot of touches. 
I just I don't like that they're they're um, I guess their specific attributes compared to some of the other guys that we have on the roster. But uh, that'll give you kind of an idea of what we're looking at. So let's jump into the game. And so here we go as we look at John Hodge, the number one running back for the Colorado Buffaloes. He's been a big weapon for uh, for Casey Clawson's offense the really the whole time he's been here. As we come down to Atlanta, can the number 15 Colorado Buffaloes keep their winning ways going here against an ACC opponent? This is obviously a Power 5 opponent. Last week against Colorado State, yes, they won. And they won by a lot, 62-24. to But if you watch that first half, you saw some kinks in that Colorado defense and the Colorado team in general. Can they overcome that this week? Can they show that that was just an aberration? Are we going to be able to see that this Colorado team is truly a contender? Last year, they made it all the way almost to the college football playoff. As you saw them win the Pac-12 Conference, uh, they were obviously one of the more dominant teams throughout the course of the season. They had one really, really poor showing against Oregon State that cost them a chance at the national championship. But uh, this year, can they make another run at the playoff after losing what was a lot of the strength of this team? This will this game today against Georgia Tech will go a long way to show that, to show if Casey Clawson and this Colorado team is capable of competing with the best, with the elite. Nobody would make the argument that Georgia Tech is one of the top teams in the country, but they do compete at one of the highest levels. Uh, they are one of the strongest programs in the ACC. You don't have to go too far back. It was just 1990, 91, something along those lines where you saw Georgia Tech actually win the national championship. They split it with this Colorado uh, uh, University. Uh, this is kind of a um, throwback to that season. As you saw those two teams uh, really split that championship. Uh, this is kind of a, uh, whatever, bragging rights matchup. Um, so we'll see. Can the Buffaloes win today against the Yellow Jackets? Can they uh, make a case that they are one of the top teams? Can Georgia Tech get a big scalp today? Can they show that this is a program on the rise? Can head coach Jamie Chadwell sort of establish himself in this program as one to be reckoned with? We'll find out today here in Atlanta as the number 15 Colorado Buffaloes take on Georgia Tech. So we have the opening kick here as Georgia Tech kicks off here to the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. Kick goes all the way to the three. Georgia Tech's going to have a nice return. They might take this all the way. They will. Well, or will he get caught from behind? The diving catch is not there. Not enough. Georgia Tech takes the opening kickoff. 97 yards for the touchdown, and they're going to put Colorado on the back heel already. Big return here to start this game. So here comes the Tech kickoff. Oh, and are we going to have back-to-back -back returns to the 40? 45, 50, 45. He's brought down at the 40. So Colorado will have great field position. So Tremblay brings the Colorado offense out. Fourth down. After that big return, they need to make something happen, and the pass is thrown out of bounds. That is incomplete. Georgia Tech will take over. Tremblay, not sure if it was a bad pass or he's just throwing it away, but Georgia Tech's offense is going to take over. Second down and seven now for Bradshaw and Georgia Tech. Handoff. Nope. Bradshaw will keep it. He'll break a tackle. He'll get the first down. He'll get into the secondary before finally being brought down after a big run. So empty backfield here for Georgia Tech. They are going to go for this fourth down. They take a receiver from right to left. Bradshaw makes an adjustment. He takes a snap. He looks, throws to his left, and that is incomplete. So Colorado now will take over. Two failed fourth down conversions start this game. Of course, Georgia Tech right now with the advantage thanks to the opening kickoff return. Third and five. And pass across the middle is complete. That is Smith again. He'll have the first down, down to about the 45 of Georgia Tech. Big play there. Colorado needs some confidence right now. That might help to build that. Second 10 from the 46. Tremblay to throw. Across the middle. That one is complete. 
That's a first down. Big play there from Georgia Tech and uh, from Colorado. And we're having a bit of a glitch here in the game as we're not seeing the stats come up. Uh, it is what it is, I guess, when you when you start messing with the code the way the revamp team has done. So from the 30 here, Colorado, four wide, two to each side. Tremblay with the pass. He's got a man. That's complete. That is, I believe that's Venner. Or sorry, uh, uh, Vinay makes the catch. That will be a first down. Big play there. So from about the 12, Tremblay drops the throw across the middle. It's complete. That is number 12. Is that the freshman, um, Hawkins? So third and goal for Colorado here from the five. They really have trouble down here. That, that offensive line is not built to run, but there's a pass across the middle, complete to Mike Smith for the touchdown. And after the extra point, we'll have a tie game here. Just a little slant route into an open space. Good delivery there from Tremblay, and the Buffaloes have tied this game. And here's Bradshaw going to try and get Georgia Tank back in front. He's going to keep on this play. Runs up the middle. Big hole. He's into the secondary. Could be gone. And he is. Big run there by James Bradshaw. He's going to get Georgia Tech the lead back. What a hole there opened up by that Tech offensive line. Colorado just could not get to him. We see a one diving attempt made, but it didn't matter. James Bradshaw. First and 10 for Colorado here. Tremblay, quick screen to the left. It's complete to Venny, who gets off a couple tackles. He turns it up. He's got the first down. He gets past midfield. Big play there. That's going to be over 20 yards on that catch for to Andrew Venny. It's just a little bubble screen. Venny gets off his defender, off of his blocker. He breaks the tackle. That was, that was the key right there, breaking that first tackle before he gets pushed out of bounds. Nice play there by Colorado. So Colorado again, they need that 37. Probably really need the 36 here. Tremblay is going to drop the throw. Tech blitzes. Tremblay gets it away. It's complete. That is Ray Webb. He's going to have the first down, down to the 30-yard line. Just a simple in route. They were giving him soft coverage. Webb finds the hole in the zone defense, makes the catch. Nice throw there by Tremblay, and that will be a Colorado first down. Third down and three. Tremblay takes the snap. Pass across the middle is complete. That is 84. Who is that? That's a true freshman, I think. Uh, Hawkins, maybe? I, I don't know. The game not... Yeah, that's Hawkins. Not giving me the names is really kind of hurting me, but that gets Colorado the ball down inside the five. Ball first and goal here inside the five-yard line. Tremblay makes an adjustment. He's going to hand this off. Up the middle. That is going to be a touchdown by Dan Green. Colorado will tie it on that run with the extra point. And we're going to go into the second quarter tied at 14. And so that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Georgia Tech returned the opening kickoff all the way for a touchdown. Since then, it's been a pretty even matchup. Colorado has been able to keep pace. They've scored a couple touchdowns. We are tied at 14. Bradshaw here with a kind of a loaded backfield. He's got three back there. He's going to hand it off to the up back who gets through the line. Big gain. He's going to have about 12, 13 yards. It'll be a first down and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Once again with that heavy backfield here is Bradshaw. Sends one of the backs in motion. It's going to be a screen, but Bradshaw can't get away from the Colorado rush. He'll lose 11 on that sack. It was a screen pass, but Colorado read it and got through to Bradshaw, drops him for the big loss. Third and eight for Bradshaw in the Georgia Tech offense. Jamie Chadwell trying to spring a big upset here. This would be a big win for him. And pass is knocked away. Fourth down and eight coming up now for Georgia Tech. So Tremblay here with the ball at about the 25-yard line. He's going to hand this one off to Hodge. Up the middle, big hole, past the 25. He is finally dropped about the 26. That'll be first and 10 for the Buffaloes. So Georgia Tech well behind the sticks right now. They need the 30-yard line. I said Georgia Tech. I meant Colorado. And Tremblay is sacked back at the 45. But there is a flag, and we have holding. That will surely be declined. Tank now, second down and six. And fake handoff, pass is complete. 
And I believe that's up to about the 38-yard line. So third and long. Georgia Tech got three receivers to the right. It's actually to the kind of the short side of the field. Bradshaw here rolls around in the pocket. He stands in. And he makes the throw, and that's complete. It will be a first down. He had all day to throw. Colorado could not get to him. Bradshaw drops the throw. In a little, with a little pressure, and, but he gets it, and oh, he had the receiver, but it was dropped. So it will be fourth down. So Georgia Tech here, fourth down. They bring the punt team out. We'll see if they actually punt it. And you've got a receiver way up there on the left. He's uncovered. And they are going to throw it. Pass is complete, but the receiver steps out of bounds. So Colorado will take over at the 40 with great field position. We'll see if Tremblay can get some points out of this. First and 10 from the 44 for Colorado. They're going to hand this off out the middle. Hodge, nice run. Breaks a couple tackles. He'll get a first down. That's up to about the 27. Third and 16 now from the 23-yard line. This will still be a big bit of an ask. Pass across the middle. It's complete, but not enough for the first down. He'll be short by about six yards. So it's the other Tremblay, Keith Tremblay, the kicker for Colorado. Number 79. We'll see if he can make this. It's going to be about a 30-yarder. Kick is up, not very good kick, but he got it through. So Colorado takes the lead. It's 17 to 14, less than two minutes to go here. Second and 10 now from the 29. And it's a screen, but Bradshaw cannot get it away. And he is dropped, sack. It'll be third and 19 now for Georgia Tech. You see a bit of a cover sack. He just, it was a screen, so the block, the uh, offensive line, Moved out to block, allowing the defensive line through. So third and 19. They need about the 40-yard line. Bradshaw here. He's got three receivers and two backs. He's going to let the clock roll down. Colorado looks like they're going to hang on to their timeouts. They're content uh, to let the clock roll and have the lead. But they're going to need to get the stop here. Georgia Tech has converted a couple of these third and longs. Here goes Bradshaw to throw, and he's in trouble. Gets it away, though. It's complete, and he'll get. Oh, he's fourth in inches. He's just short. We'll see what Tech does. So, 38 seconds to go here for Colorado. They bring four receivers out, three to the right. Tremblay will throw. He's going long. Got a man. That's complete. 35-30, 25-20. Down inside the 20 to about the 17. Big play there. It's just a simple go route. That was Ray Webb. He gets past the bump coverage and then gets in behind the secondary. Tremblay lays the ball out for him perfectly. And Colorado now in business. So here we go from the 17. Tremblay takes the snap. 23 seconds to go. Across the middle. That's complete. Down inside the five. Big play right there. Colorado with a chance to take a commanding lead into the half. Just a little route across the middle there. Complete. I think that's Hawkins, the true freshman. So five seconds to go here for this Colorado offense. Probably enough time to run a play and still be able to get the field goal off. We'll see, though. Tremblay here. Swings it out. That's complete. Touchdown, Colorado, to Dan Green. He just ran a little wheel route out there to the right. Tremblay quickly gets the pass out there, and Colorado will now take a two-score lead into the half. That is big. That is huge for this Buffalo team as they're trying to fight through this game. Oh, that's going to be the end of the half. So Colorado gets to the end of the half with a two-score lead. Georgia Tech took the opening kickback for a touchdown, and they've made some plays on offense. They've just not, they've only finished the one drive. That's kind of the problem. They've, they've kind of knocked on the door, but they've gotten you know, into Colorado territory and kind of stalled out a couple of times. Meanwhile, Colorado's offense has done just enough to score points. I, I wouldn't call them well-oiled at this point. But you know what? They lead the game by 10. So that's, um, they've gotten, you know, that might be the, that might be just kind of the way this offense goes. You know, make the plays they have to make to win games. We'll see. But uh, right now, they lead this game. Can they keep it up? Uh, defense is going to have to step up, continue to play well. Offense going to have to keep the ball, move the ball, keep their defense off the field. So we'll see if the Buffaloes can keep this thing going here in the second half. It's going to be important as we get ready to go into conference play that the Buffaloes sort of at least figure out who they are as a team so that they know that as they get ready to take on some of the Pac-12 opponents. Uh, they, if they have any hope 
of uh, winning a second straight conference championship and getting into the college football playoff. They're going to have to win these tough games. And Georgia Tech is making this a tough game, so we'll see if they can keep it going here in the second half. Second down and four for Trimble in the Buffalo offense. Georgia Tech showing a safety blitz, and they bring it. Colorado picks it up. Pass gets away to Vanny on the shallow cross. He makes the catch. Nice run after the catch. He'll get it past midfield as Colorado now over 250 yards passing for this game. They're going to need to keep that up if they want to hope to win here as they get near Colorado or Georgia Tech territory. Third and three for Colorado here. They need the 40. And Tech blitzes. Pass out to the left is complete, but he's going to lose a yard. Had to come back to make the catch. Not a great throw there by Tremblay. You see the receiver have to come back to get to the ball. Try to make a play with it. You really can't blame the receiver there. He's trying to get the first down. And handoff up the middle, and it's not going to be enough. Fourth down coming up. So second and nine from the 44. They need them. Well, they need to get to the Georgia Tech side of the field here. Tremble is going long. Got a man. That's complete. That's Ray Webb. He breaks the tackle. Gets out of bounds down at the 15. What a pass there by Tremblay and then Ray Webb making the catch and then doing something with it after he will have Colorado in excellent field position, chance to score to really take absolute command of this game. So first and 10 from the 15 here is Tremblay. He's got two backs. He's got a tight end out there split out a little bit. He's going to throw it across the middle. That's complete to Ray Webb. Ray Webb finishes the drive that he really kind of built. Big touchdown catch there. Colorado now up 30 to 14. Ray Webb being congratulated. Well done, Webb, on that drive. Big drive for him. You see the Colorado defense come out. Let's see if they can get the buffs the ball back. So it's third and inches. And Bradshaw will hand this off, and he's not going to get there. The Buffaloes swarm and force another fourth down for Georgia Tech. Big play there by the Buffaloes. All right, and rare situation here as Colorado empties the backfield for Tremblay. He's going to run for it. He'll get the first down. Then some. He breaks a tackle, breaks another. He's down inside the 25, inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. What a run by Tremblay. Georgia Tech had a lot of opportunities to bring him down, but he just shoved off those Yellow Jacket defenders and now has Colorado in a dangerous position to score again, although now we've got an injury. This is Reed for Georgia Tech. So from the 15, here goes Tremblay in the Colorado offense. He'll take the snap. Looks, throws into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown to the tight end, Chris Cox, running the corner route, and Colorado now is really kind of putting this game away. They're up 37-14 with the extra point on the way. Nice throw there by Tremblay to find Cox. So now Bradshaw is on a mission here to make this thing respectable. He's got four receivers. We'll see what he can do in the passing game. Cross the middle is complete, and that will be a tech first down about the 41. Bradshaw again with four receivers. He'll throw. Colorado blitzes, but they pick it up, and another first down pass. Third and six. Bradshaw, they need the 36-yard line of Colorado. They're running a screen. It's complete. And he's going to get it. He's going to get down to the 31. Big play there. So this game's really gone away from Tech in this quarter. It was 24-14 at the half. They're now down 38-14. Handoff. And running back is going to get down inside the five. Bradshaw. First and goal from the one. Handoff. Nobody's going to keep it. And trot into the end zone. Georgia Tech will cut this to a 17-point lead once the extra point is through. So they're going to go for two here. Is Georgia Tank. They bring a tight end from left to right. Bradshaw hands it off, and he's not going to get there. Two point conversion is no good, so Tech holds at 20. Colorado leads by 18. First and 10 now for the Colorado offense. Georgia Tech has scored to cut into that deficit a little bit. Tremblay across the middle in the shallow cross. That is complete. And that will be a first down to the 49, and that was Smith. So that is the end of the third quarter. Colorado leads it right now, 38-20. to 20. So they've got a three-score lead, but Georgia Tech, they just scored. We'll see if they've got any fight left, left, left in them here in the fourth quarter. Colorado needs the 45 of Georgia Tech. Tremblay to throw. 
to his left. It's complete, and that will be a first down. And who is that? Number 10, whoever that is, turned it upfield. Is that Hawkins? No, it's not Hawkins. Not sure who that is, but he made the play. Got Colorado to the first down. Davis. He'll keep the drive alive. I believe that's another true freshman. So third and 10. Got to imagine Colorado going to go for this. They're not going to send that kicker out. They're going to send Tremblay the kicker out for a 39. Oh, wide open. Is that Purcell? 10-5 out of bounds at the 2. I'm pretty sure that's Sam Purcell running the corner out there. And they just let him go. There's nobody out there. Georgia Tech probably some kind of elaborate blitz that left a huge space on the corner that Purcell was able to exploit. And he'll put the buffs in good scoring position here. And they're going to hand it off again. Still, Wilcox not able to get there. It'll be fourth down. Colorado will kick the field goal. Try to take that three touchdown lead on Tech. So here comes Tremblay, the kicker. Bit of a high pressure situation. Looks like he got it through, though. Yes. So Colorado will go now go up 41 to 20. Tech down by three touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. Bradshaw here. Got a tight end, one back, three receivers. They need the 40 yard line. And Bradshaw will keep it, and he'll get there. Just gets it across the line. That'll be a first down for Georgia Tech. Empty backfield again for Bradshaw. And he's going to throw. And pass is completed. Will be enough for the first down. Down to about the 45 of Colorado. So fourth and three. Bradshaw and the Georgia Tech offense. They're going to go for it. Jamie Chadwell try to keep his team in the game. Bradshaw keeps. He'll get the first down and then some down inside the 30. Down near the 26. First and 10. Bradshaw to throw. To his right. Got a man wide open. That will be a Georgia Tech touchdown. And the Yellow Jackets still have some hope. They're only down by two scores here. As the receiver got in behind the secondary, got off the press coverage, was wide open. Bradshaw delivered a perfect ball. And Georgia Tech still fighting, staying in this game. Second down and three. Tremblay across the middle, complete. And look at that run. That is Ray Webb. Big catch and run there. It's a little slant route. Wide open on the play. Tremblay, perfect delivery. And Tremblay, or uh, Webb, he just finds the little uh, crease there in the defense and makes a big play. First and 10 for Colorado. Colorado going to go for this. They cannot try to kick a 50-yard field goal. So Tremblay is given the task of getting the Buffaloes the first down. He'll take the snap. Tech blitzes. Passes away. It's complete to Andrew Venny. Makes the catch. Breaks a tackle. He's in the end zone. Colorado with the score. Andrew Venny, their top receiver, makes a play. Breaks a tackle. And he'll probably put away any drama in this game. As Tech still has there now will have be down by three touchdowns there's only three minutes to go not impossible but it's going to be very difficult from here for georgia tech to get the win first and ten tech still driving bradshaw throws to his right and that pass is intercepted intercepted uh not sure who that is number 20 who is that but the return is on to the 40 the 35 inside the 35 Big play there. Not even sure who that is. I should know who it is. But it was just man-to-man man -man coverage. And Cook makes the interception. Big return. Going to put Colorado in scoring position. And that is going to just about do it here today in Atlanta. So easy decision here for Coach Clawson. Uh, too far out for a field goal. Too close in to just punt it away. So they're going to let the second team go for this first down. As the quarterback rolls the left, pass is complete, but it will be short. And Tech will take over right there as Johnson completes the pass, but Venny could not convert the first down. So the Yellow Jackets will take over. Bradshaw's got three to his right. He's going to drop the throw. It's a screen. Swings it out to the left. It's complete. And he's just bottled up. He did not get there. Empty backfield here for Colorado. They're, again, they're not content to just run out the clock. Pass swings out to the right. He had the man, but the pass was dropped, so it will be fourth down. And cross to the 32. We look at the game track here. Georgia Tech, what can you say? They fought hard, but the Colorado offense just 
kept making plays that they had to make. I would I would fall short of calling them efficient. They just made some big plays. Uh, meanwhile, Georgia Tech offense could not keep up. But Bradshaw coming back out to try to get some kind of consolation here for the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. So second and nine for Bradshaw. Make some adjustment here. Only 18 seconds to go. He is going to throw. Rolls over to his right. And passes long. He's got a man in behind the secondary. This will be a touchdown. Georgia Tech. Jerry Johnson, the fullback, somehow snuck out of the backfield, got in behind the secondary, and Colorado lost him. That's a touchdown. Seven seconds. It's gonna be it's hard to imagine Tech having enough to be able to actually get a result here, but Colorado uh, defense fell asleep. So Georgia Tech is going to try the onside. Colorado appears to be lined up for it. And they do recover it right at midfield. So here we see Webb's big catch here. I don't think he scored on it, but uh, he, that one he did. And there's one across the middle. Webb, big game today. He probably is your player of the game. We see him. Looks like he might be coming back out. Clawson sending him out there. So it was a lot of action here today. Got to hand it to both teams. They both fought all the way to the end. Colorado, though, is going to be the victor, winning by two touchdowns, 48-34. to 34. Georgia Tech just didn't quite have enough there on offense. They could not. They, uh, they really contained that Colorado defense, but they are sorry, the Colorado offense. But the Buffaloes made enough plays with the ball to get the win uh, we'll look at the stats here in a moment but uh, a lot of credit to Georgia Tech they looked in the eyes of a uh, an opponent who last season was just outside of the college football playoff and they fought until the end they actually spent a good part of the first half looking like they were going to make this a down to the wire affair but Colorado once we got to the second half the Buffaloes kind of kept the yellow jacket at arm's length and ends up with a two touchdown win as we start to head towards conference season for both teams. So big win there for Colorado, um, but much respect to Georgia Tech. Looking at the team stats here, first downs, obviously Colorado led that uh, total offense. Both teams put up some pretty big numbers, 577 yards overall for Colorado, 105 on the ground, 472. That's more than I thought, if I'm being honest with you, but 472 yards to the air. Uh, big game for the Colorado attack. Georgia Tech, 179 on the ground. That's pretty respectable. 288 through the air. Bradshaw, James Bradshaw, obviously. You know what? If you just were going to pick a player of the game um, from between both teams, you almost have to give it to Bradshaw. We'll look at his numbers here in a moment. Third down conversions. Colorado, big advantage here. 52%, 9 of 17. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, 4 of 14. Uh, that obviously made it difficult for Tech to stay in the game. You just look at the red zone numbers. Also, Colorado just spent more time in the red zone. Georgia Tech made some big plays to score, but uh, they just they just did not have that offense that they needed to to constantly be uh, putting pressure on the Colorado defense. Uh, as we look at uh, some of the other stats, not a lot of big numbers here. Colorado did win the time of possession, although that number really is kind of overrated. You look at total yards between return yards and everything, Georgia Tech actually had more. Uh, might be worth noting somewhat. You look at their fourth down conversion, Georgia Tech, three of six. Don't see many teams attempt a fourth down conversion six times, but Georgia Tech did it, converted three. Uh, as we look at the player stats, uh, obviously, you know, decent game there for Ralph Tremblay. 33 of 44, that's 75%. Five touchdowns, no picks, no picks. That's big, 459 yards. Uh, meanwhile, Eric Johnson and his backup duty did not do very well. Only three of nine for 13 yards. Uh, so the Buffaloes need to make sure that they keep Tremblay healthy, apparently. We look at the rushing yards. Uh, Hodge carried the ball 11 times for 59. Meanwhile, Ralph, the quarterback, carried 8 for 31. Uh, as he contributed a little bit. Dan Green eh, had trouble finding space. Uh, six carries, only one yard. He's going to need to prove on that. Uh, Matt Wilcox came into the game, true freshman, four carries for 15. Uh, Dan Green did have the one touchdown, so props there. 
Uh, Ray, Ray Webb, big receiver today. He probably, again, was your top offensive player for the Buffaloes. 10 catches, 165 yards with the score. Vinny had a score of 121 yards on eight catches. Mike Smith chipped in with six catches for 57 yards and a touchdown. Meanwhile, tight end Chris Cox, he only made one catch, but it was a big one. Scored a touchdown. And then Dan Green, his one catch was also a touchdown catch. So we go to defense. Uh, Kyle White, your All-American outside linebacker. He had eight solo tackles to lead the team. He also had a couple TFLs, but uh, Travis Keith and Earl Evans led the team with TFLs with three. Uh, of course, Prince Cook with his interception. That was a big play. Uh, Cook also had a sack as well as Travis Keith with a sack as well. Deflections, Hodges had a couple. Uh, McMillan had one. I don't think there were any fumbles forced. Uh, Nips, obviously no recoveries. Uh, kicking game. Uh, Trembley made both of the field goals that we asked him to kick, but the reality is he's not going to be able to make many outside of 40 yards. So uh, a kicking game is, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to just figure, to overcome it this year. We're, you know, we're not going to be able to settle for drives to the 30, 35 our drives are going to have to go well inside the red zone to hope to have any points at all. Uh, Joey Armstrong, the true freshman punter, uh, he did okay for himself. His uh, net, though, was only about 32.3. Uh, kick returns. Um, uh, Dominique Smith had uh, three for 116. 38.6. He had a 58-yard kick return. Didn't take it all the way, but that's a big return. That's a big return. If he can keep those coming this season... Who knows, you know, maybe he can get his name in the Jet Award. Uh, he also had a couple punts, um, punt returns, not much there. So a big game, big win. Um, just kind of my overall impression of this game. Uh, our offense, we're just going to be one of those offenses that has to make some big plays here. We're not going to be a very methodical offense. When you look at Tremblay's attack, 13.9 per completion. Uh, that's high for us. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. But it's just not the kind of offense that we've ran in the past. Um, you know, if, if, if we win every game, we'll take it how we get it. But uh, Tremblay, that's just, you know, his game is not the methodical, you know, work your way down the field. It's the big plays uh, in the passing game. So we just have to hope that he keeps those coming. Uh, I'm a little nervous heading into conference play because, uh, you know what, if, the, if our opponent takes away those big plays and he's going to have to work the team down the field, I don't know, we don't know yet that he's going to be able to do that. Um, meanwhile, our defense obviously also was not very inspiring. We uh, gave up a lot of yards, 467 um, 38, 34 points. So, you know, this is Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's not even one of the top teams in the country. So, you know, we start playing the USC's uh, of the Pac-12. Um, yeah, this could be a difficult season for us. So we're going to need to improve in, uh, certainly on defense. And then uh, offensive, we're just going to be a little more efficient. One thing I do like, though, we did manage to run 83 plays. That's about where we want to be. I want to run about 80 plays a game. Uh, Georgia Tech ran about 72. That's, you know, you're going to, when you, when you run a lot of plays, your opposition is going to run a lot of plays. Uh, so, you know, there's good and bad. Just make sure you tune in to see how well uh, this Colorado team does. They start the season off 2-0 with the big win against a Power 5 opponent. This is Ball Force 1 signing off. I'll see you next time.